Hey guys, we've just gotten back from two huge days adventuring around the Colombian countryside on these awesome XRs thanks to the Adrenaline Addicts Moto guys. Let me show you some of the highlights. Okay, so up front, this adventure did not go exactly as planned. But if you've seen my other adventures, you'll know that I love a good challenge. And this adventure was full of them. We're in a foreign country. We have good. no phone reception for maps or calls. We were pressed for time and we had some bonus challenges pop up at the last minute. Right, so quick aside. The Columbia that you see in 2023 is very different to the Columbia of the 1980s, 1990s and early 2000s. For those who have got their opinions of Columbia from TV dramas and drug docos, I'm here to set the record straight just so you can understand what the country's been through and what the country's like now because it is totally different. So almost everybody knows about the cocaine cowboys and narcos of the 1970s, but not a lot of people know that on top of this, from 1958 until around 2016, there's been an armed conflict ongoing between the government and several guerrilla groups, with hundreds of thousands of people being killed over almost 60 years of ongoing conflict. On top of this, narcos like Pablo Escobar terrorised the public by planting more than 170 bombs over the mid 80s and early 90s. So you can understand the people of Colombia have been through a lot. And in 2016, when peace was finally declared, the people were ready for a change. So now the country is relatively safe especially around the tourist destinations. The locals are super friendly and keen to share their paradise with tourists, with so much natural beauty, spectacular mountains, the Amazon and all its wildlife, all the way through to bright beaches, islands and pristine reefs. Okay, so back to the adventure. It starts at our hostel, about one hour and a half out of Santa Marta on the northeast coast of Colombia. We got off to a good start initially because we were super excited to get going and so we quickly got our gear sorted with heads full of adventure, waterfalls, mountains and smooth sailing. Little did we know what was in store for us. From the get-go we realised that we didn't have mobile reception so navigation was going to be a challenge. Luckily, Sam at Adrenaline Addicts Moto had us sorted. He recommended using Reva, and so he sent me the route that we were gonna take through the mountains, which I managed to download offline before we left. The route we'd chosen was a local favorite, which led us through the mountains, past some local villages, and back to the main road near our accommodation. About five minutes down the road though, I realised I didn't have my quad lock. So every time I needed to check the maps for a turn, I had to pull over and get my phone out, which was fine initially, but eventually it adds up and became an absolute pain once we realised we didn't have a lot of time. Okay, another quick aside. If you don't have a quad lock, you're probably wondering what I'm talking about. It's basically the best way that I've found to mount my phone to my motorbike, car or bicycle, or even in your office. The best thing for a motorbike is you have your maps easy to see. Just a quick glance down to check your phone. No need to stop and waste five minutes every single time getting your phone out of your pocket. Also, they've now got a vibration dampener and a charger, so it keeps you on track, charged up, and won't hurt your iPhone camera. Plus, it's waterproof as you can see here. So if you're wondering how to install it on a Scrambler or almost any bike, you can check out my quad lock video and link in the description below. Or if you wanna look at buying a quad lock, I've also got a referral link below where you can save 5%. Back on the road, we made the turn onto the off-road route. And after a slow check of the map to make sure, we headed off. At first, the road seemed pretty tame, plenty of space and a few interspersed bumps, and the occasional 4x4 passing by.
but as we progressed, we started to hit some pretty washed out ruts, which only got worse from there onwards. We pressed on though, keen to find some nice views of the mountains and somewhere I could get the drone up to really show the amazing landscape that we're exploring. We stopped for a breather and I checked our progress. We'd barely done a quarter of the entire track and we only had three hours of sunlight left, which meant we would be cutting it pretty fine. With this in mind, we took off and tried to speed things up a bit, but the road only got worse. With some deep rutted river crossings, whoops and washed away sections of the road, we had to take it really easy because a crash or injury in the middle of nowhere in a foreign country with night setting in would not be a good way to finish our trip early. Although we were under some pressure, sometimes I just couldn't help but stop to check out a few of the more impressive parts of the trail, including this bridge in the middle of nowhere, crossing a picturesque, fast-flowing river, so we just stopped for a quick shot and then we're back on the road. So a quick tip for those thinking about renting motorbikes overseas. A lot of people forget about safety and insurance and I can understand why. You just want to get out and use the short time you have to see as much as you can and explore. It's worth making sure that the place that you rent from has safety gear and medical coverage if you can, because normal travel insurance often has sneaky clauses in their contracts to get out of covering motorbike accidents unless you specifically choose the right coverage options. Luckily for us, Adrenaline Addicts Moto are great guys with great quality bikes and safety gear included, as well as medical coverage. Okay, so back to the adventure. Despite deteriorating road conditions and fading light, we pressed on, pushing the bikes and ourselves to our limits and where possible, speeding through some of the faster sections to make up for lost time on the slow sections. continued to make some slow progress and gradually the sun started to dip below the horizon but we had no choice but to keep powering through. Some parts of the trail were covered by thick trees which really limited visibility and I had some near misses with deep ruts and holes seemingly coming out of nowhere. Just at the point where we thought we might be stuck out overnight, we started to see some lights emerging from the trees ahead and breathed a sigh of relief. We'd made it back to the main road. From there, it was just a quick jet down the tarmac where we parked up at our hostel for the night and rewarded ourselves with a hot shower and a beer. So reflecting on what we know now, we would definitely recommend allocating an entire day to this loop to really take our time, enjoy it, and maybe even squeeze in a waterfall at the end of the day.
Unfortunately for us, we ended up in a bit of a race against time, which we really didn't need on top of the challenging terrain. And although the bikes were top quality, they were a little bit unfamiliar to us, so we weren't as fast as we could have been. In the end though, we still had a great time and we would do it all over again the next day to Minka. So stay tuned, like and subscribe for the next video coming soon.